Building an aircraft carrier takes generations of experience, hundreds of thousands of man-hours, years of planning, and steady determination. USS Gerald R. Ford or CVN-78 is the product of years of construction and before that years of planning and design. 5,000 shipbuilders in Newport News and thousands of suppliers across the United States contributed to this first-in-class ship. Hello everyone, welcome back again with us in another episode of Military TV. Today we are about to discuss the USS Gerald R. Ford Defense Systems as the most advanced aircraft carrier in the world. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. The USS Gerald R. Ford is a $13 billion futuristic ship complete with a gigantic flight deck and a new electromagnetic system to launch aircraft. The state-of-the-art tech and operational systems mean aircraft will be able to take off faster to get to the fight quicker. At 1,100 feet, the new Ford Carrier is about the size of three football fields. This carrier is named after former U.S. President Gerald R. Ford to pay tribute to his lifetime of service to the nation in the Navy and the U.S. government. During World War II, Ford was a Navy Lieutenant Commander serving on the light carrier USS Monterey. The class, with a planned total of 10 ships, will replace the Navy's current carriers in a one-for-one -one basis, starting with the lead ship, Gerald R. Ford, replacing Enterprise, and then eventually taking the place of the existing Nimitz-class carriers. The new vessels have a hull similar to the Nimitz-class, but introduce technologies since developed with the CVN-X or CVN-21 program, such as the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System EMALS, as well as other design features intended to improve efficiency and reduce operating costs, including sailing with smaller crews. That's why the Combat Systems Ship's Qualification Trials are an important step to be sure the warship can defend itself against a variety of threats such as drones and missiles. So what kind of defense system does this new carrier have? The Navy's flagship USS Ford aircraft carrier attacked and destroyed enemy rocket-propelled drones, aircraft, and surface threats with interceptor missiles, sensors, and other ship defenses in a series of warfare preparation exercises designed to move the ship closer to major maritime warfare. In the Atlantic Ocean, the Ford recently completed what's called Combat System Ships Qualification Trials CSSQT, a combat preparation phase involving simulated and actual live threats to assess the extent to which a large Ford-class carrier could defend itself in a great power ocean war scenario. The USS Ford faced off against rocket-propelled drones capable of speeds in excess of 600 miles per hour, towed drone units that simulate rockets, and remote-controlled high-speed maneuvering surface targets. Demonstrating this kind of defensive capability is both timely and extremely significant from a tactical perspective given ongoing discussions about potential vulnerability of aircraft carriers in an increasingly high-tech major power threat environment. However, much of the discussion, which is largely based upon the existence of extremely long-range Chinese carrier killer anti-ship missiles, regularly seems to overlook the growing technological sophistication of layered ship defense systems. Newer kinds of integrated sensor networking, longer-range ship-based radar, and things like artificial intelligence-enabled targeting technology, or even emerging laser weapons, are fast changing the equation when it comes to protecting carriers and other larger surface ships at sea. The recent Sea Squat, as it's called, seems specifically directed towards preparing the Ford for an entirely new sphere of enemy attacks, using recently upgraded systems such as the Rolling Airframe Missile, Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile, and the MK-15 Phalanx close-in weapon system SeaWiz to fire armor-piercing tungsten bullets, according to the Navy report. The crew crushed it, firing off four missiles consisting of two RIM-116 and two ESSM, and all of them were conducted with precision control by Combat Direction Center watch teams they executed perfectly. Interestingly, some of the specific ship's defense weapons mentioned in the Navy report have gone through substantial upgrades in recent years. This is part of an effort entirely aligned with the Navy's multi-year effort to better arm its surface fleet with weapons able to destroy highly sophisticated enemies amid open ocean or blue water maritime combat. 
The now combat-ready upgraded Sea Sparrow ESS M Block II missile, for example, is engineered with a special sea skimming mode enabling the interceptor to descend close to the surface to destroy enemy anti-ship missiles traveling parallel to the ocean just above the water. Instead of operating with purely an upward trajectory, the ESS M Block II can skim across the surface to take out an entirely new sphere of attacking enemy threats. The Navy Sea Whiz was, as mentioned, also used in the combat qualifications, another weapon which has undergone substantial upgrades in recent years. The Sea Whiz system, which fires hundreds of small metal projectiles in a minute towards incoming threats such as enemy drones, missiles, or helicopters, has historically operated primarily as a counter-air weapon. However, as far back as six years ago, the Navy has been working on a 1B Sea Whiz variant, able to track and destroy approaching surface threats such as swarming small boats or even some approaching enemy missiles. The upgrades greatly expanded the ship's defensive mission envelope to fight off newer kinds of attacks. Sea Whiz is a last line of defense, meaning it is expected to be used when other longer-range elements of a ship's layered systems are no longer effective. As reported by Sea Power, sailors aboard the aircraft carrier USS Gerald R. Ford CVN-78 successfully completed Combat System Ships Qualification Trial Sea Squat on April 16, 2021, representing a major milestone in validating the ship's capability to defend itself and the crew. The trials, which commenced in February, consisted of five phases the completion of the final phase, 2C, and CSSQT overall is the culmination of years of planning, training, ingenuity, and thousands of working hours for the ship's current and previous crews. In addition, key components of the CVN-78 Ship Self-Defense System ICS, include dual-band radar DBR, Cooperative Engagement Capability CEC, Ship Self-Defense System, Evolve Sea Sparrow Missile ESSM, and Rolling Airframe Missile. DBR searched for, located, and tracked the target and subsequently provided radar illumination to the ESSM to support missile guidance. The CEC, which provides a single integrated air picture, fusing data from multiple sensors to improve track accuracy, processed the data for the ship's self-defense system, which then passed launch commands to the missile and scheduled DBR support for the engagement. In the final stage, the ESM successfully engaged and defeated the target. This integrated combat system success brings Ford one step closer to operational testing and deployment. On January 2019, the U.S. Navy awarded and CVN-78 accepted its first Advanced Weapons Elevator AWE last month, which will allow it to move up to 24,000 pounds of ordnance at 150 feet per minute. So, carriers are often protected by destroyers and other warships traveling in a carrier strike group, yet they are also themselves increasingly being prepared as platforms capable of heavy combat on the open ocean with advanced technology. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more awesome videos.